everyone, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we bring you the finale of our 2022 Jonesboro Open at the This Side of Heaven. This is our back nine of the final round for our Chase card. Once again, a special shout out goes to our Patreon supporters who help make all of this possible. I am Dustin Murray, finishing off this final round with all of you out there watching. Hoping you're enjoying yourselves. As I know these players are looking to make that final push as we look at the front nine results. Simon, Joel, and Emerson all still sit tied for fifth place and just scrapping for position. Canute fall into 18th, but still looking to find a strong finish. As we look at our leaderboard here, it's a tight race for the top. Multiple players tied for second, just a stroke behind Calvin, and many players now tied for fifth at 17 under par. As we get to hole 10, the difficult uphill 360 foot par three that low ceiling towards the bottom of the slope is what really makes this hole challenging also there is a slope on the back side of the basket that makes putting a little bit more dangerous it's all about finding that perfect height and moving left to right getting above that log but not getting too high into the branches and that has great height and forward momentum but just did not have enough turn so that's going to be outside circle two for emerson joel going for the forehand Trying to flex it up there. That looks brilliant if it gets the right skip. Actually goes deep and gets a nasty roll. Does kind of curl back in towards that edge of circle one, however. So at least he'll have an uphill putt that's not as dangerous for birdie. Let me see that slow turning. Likely FD there from Simon. Gets caught on the right, but then kicks out into the circle, I believe. That is a bit fortunate. Pretty shot there from Simon. And Canute just not getting enough turn on that disc. Still going to skip up the hill, though, near circle two or inside of it. Yeah. And here, Emerson up first to putt outside circle two. And you have to respect that. It was kind of just a lofty bid that was safe. Was it going to be worrisome if it missed? Uh, catches Menil there, but not the chains. But still stays in circle one for the comeback for par. Here's Simon. Great look at birdie. And he will put it in. Really well done there from Simon. Puts him to four under now on the round. Keeps him in that hunt for fifth. Here's that uphill putt that Joel has. Uh, just a little low. Luckily, doesn't kick and roll back down. Canute able to catch that right side chains to salvage par. Rest of the card looking to do about the same as you're starting to see a little bit of rain coming in here. Obviously, wind has been a constant threat. And there was rainy conditions prior to the tournament that caused for muddy grounds, which meant difficult footing for some approach shots. But now you're also getting some drops coming down, challenging our players here. So we now jump into hole 11, the 560-foot par 4. You just got to get up the hill and as far forward as you can off the tee to set up what is usually a spike hyzer forehand for right-handed players into the green to set up for birdie. Just got to make sure you don't go too inside left off the tee. is really the main thing to avoid. Catching some limbs is going to be Simon, but he still pushes a good way down, so still should be fine. This looks solid out of Emerson's hands, getting a slight turn, but now getting the fade back. And well forward. Definitely should put him in position for his forehand. And Joel catching maybe a bit more fade than he was hoping for, but pushes past everything, so he is fine.
Canute also threatening that left side tree line. And does kind of get tangled up. But honestly, the last couple of days when I've thought someone's in trouble over there, we've seen them get out no problem. I think it was Garrett Gerthy the first round on our feature card, and then round two was AJ Carey, who still found a way to get to the green from that cluster, so should be fine. And here's that Spike Heiser forehand we were talking about. And Emerson sticks it perfectly. Should be finding birdie from there, no problem. Simon going for the backhand turnover to the green. And skates up there just inside the circle. Canute has a great angle in. But just two inside on that forehand. It's not enough forward push at all, and that's going to be tangled up. And here's Joel, who got the most progress. Spikes in is no problem. So a lot of good birdie looks here, except for Canute, who got tangled up there. Good layout to pitch up for his par. Really good out. Here's Simon for birdie inside the circle. Yeah. And that will find it. Keeps him in that fifth place position. Joel looking for birdie to stay in that tie for sixth. Oh no. Low and right, but just a bit too right. And so it's going to have to just be the par for Joel. And that's going to be disappointing. He played the hole so well and just falls a bit short on the putting green. Drops him down to 11th for now. But again, scores are tight, so easily able to gain back into the top 10. Zimmerson will find his birdie. Definitely one of the more scorable holes on the course on the day. Played 0.35 under par, excuse me. 35 under par would be outrageous. <laughs> so 48% of the field is fine on the birdie. And here we go. Hole 12, 655 foot par four. It's all about getting across that gap. And then it's the kind of blind downhill approach shot to the green to set up for birdie. But really all you're trying to do is get across this ditch and just don't go too far left, making your approach shot longer. Man, that looks fine on assignment's hands. Pretty much where you want to be. I want you to get over there, it's just kind of all about feel from having played the hold numerous times over the years and throughout practice rounds prior to the event, just kind of getting a feel for how much power you need to put as you approach that blind green. Timerson will get through. So, so far, so good for the card. No problem for Joel Freeman either. As again, really the only danger you get to is just being shorter, getting tangled up on that tree on the left. But so far, so good for our card. Just Canute left. And yeah, that has nowhere else to go but where it needs to be. So good drives from our entire car. Now it's all about nailing this approach. Again, if you push deep, that back slope can cause some nasty rollaways and give you a tougher time trying to find the birdie. So you just really have to get the right power on the shot. And that is brilliant. Perfectly played. Just as well done there from Joel Freeman. Everyone's crushing this hole so far. And that'll do. Not quite the bullseye like the other two, but still well inside circle one. So 
birdie looks a plenty thus far here on hole 12. Just a jump putt approach here for Simon. Oh, swings it around the back side, gets a bit of a roll, but stays on the edge of circle one. So going to be a bit of a tough uphill headwind putt here. And again, the threat of the roll back down if you miss is always there. And that one just gets floated a little too high from Simon. Headwind takes it even higher. We'll have to settle for par, at least stays up there. Canute, though, finds the birdie no problem. And I mean, Joel and Emerson are pretty much parked. So they'll get their birdie. Simon settles for par. And yeah, just drop into the scores here for Emerson and Joel, keeping them towards the top end of that leaderboard. We'll be back after the break. Focus. Get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing. Trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. Back here at the uphill blind shot on hole 13, 353 feet. A bit of a sloped green on that right-hand side. Kind of two options off the tee. You can see the wider kind of hyzer play on the right, and then also people will play between the two trees on this left-hand side. Usually backhands, but we see Emerson going for the flex forehand. And gets caught up in that tall grass, which is one of the issues you can run into on the forehand route. Looks like Joel's going for the backhand wide right. Just trying to spike it in there. Kind of ground play, yes. <laughs> Ball's right there near the edge of circle one, looked like. Looked a little low out of the hands there from Canute. Could still get the right ground action though, and yeah, it does. Gets up there, gives him something. Spike highs are taken from Simon as well. Swinging it well left and does pretty great, honestly. So now we get over to Emerson, who I imagine has a bit of a tricky putt here. Just kind of lays up. Understands the risk versus reward. So here we see Joel Freeman. Oh, what? Just a little low, but falls into place for his par. Canute 2 looking from outside circle 1 from the woods. Commits. Catches left side chains, but does not stick it. And here's Simon, our best chance for birdie. And he will connect. Three of the last four going his way. Now six under on the round. Keeping him in that fifth place position. Emerson will likely fall just a bit with the par. Joel connects as well on his three. Alongside Emerson. Canute to follow suit. Now it's to hole 14. Per my personal favorite to watch played. 520 foot downhill shot. Plays a little shorter on distance due to that downhill nature. But the gap you have to hit is so far down the fairway. Right near the mouth of the green. Requires a perfect shot to give yourself a birdie putt. 
And that's just not getting enough turn. There are some sneaky backdoor gaps to get to the pin for par from over there, so it's not a total disaster for Simon, but you have to have the perfect flexing shot to get through this gap. Usually you see players kind of hug that right-hand side of the gap and then have it fade in gently. As that's not going to have it either from Emerson. I'll be joining Simon on that left-hand side. This has some legs to it from Joel Freeman. Just didn't really have enough height. It was on the right line. At least still has a look at the pin, but certainly well outside comfortable putting distance. At least an open approach. See if Canute can do better. He just starts that out way too left and just not remotely enough turn. That's going to be way out there. That is going to be a, quite the challenge. Tries to throw a forehand in but gets a little bit caught up. Like almost like we're gonna see like some kind of grenade forehand for uh, from Emerson, but decides just to go for the intense spike heiser forehand instead, and kind of flies across the green. So still gonna have a tough time there. Let's see what Simon wants to do here, looking to maybe try to punch through, kind of a overhand shot almost. Plinko's in there, but that's still a congested look at the basket. Meanwhile, Joel at least has the open look to approach just on the edge of circle two. Tries a little bit of a jump look. Not quite, but we'll get the par no problem. As this did play as the most difficult hole on the day. 0. 0.41 strokes over par. Only 5% of the field finding the birdie. And Canute won't even be able to find the three. Just six birdies on the day. Emerson, too, will miss his chance for par. And still out. At least that will fall, limiting the damage. Takes a four on the hole here. Beats of an 18 under par and tied for eighth position. We start heading into our final holes of the tournament. I think, I think Simon's trying to figure out exactly how to establish his lie. Or maybe who's next to putt. He's uh, stuck underneath this group of dead branches. And he will be able to get the par, now jumping up to a tie for fourth position. Canute takes bogey. Joel likely should find par here. Takes his time and puts it in. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat, so I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G jerky. You got smash crack pepper on Tuesday. You can Wednesday you got mm -hmm. the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14. You might need a little pick me up. Pull out some Double G jerky. Grab the big bag because you're going to have to share. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. As so we get into hole 15, what's typically been the easiest hole in the course and certainly the shortest at 270 feet. Just got to have that distance control. After throwing bombs all day, you need to tone it down a bit and try to get this one and really get the score. This is one you really want on the back nine.
Good yep, job. Simon sticks it perfectly. Is you're going to see a lot of kind of mid or fairway driver spike hyzers here. Looking good from Joel Freeman as well. Should stick in. Yeah, yep, no problem. Similar line from Emerson Keith. Maybe a little wider, but it's the great ground action. Right there near the pin. So, so far, everything's playing according to planned. When you're approaching this hole, that's what you're looking for. And three out of four, I've done it. Can Canute join? It's a little more fade than he was probably hoping for. And does have the longest look, but still in the circle. But just wide left on the putt. Joel will find the center. Good score. Keeps him in that tie for eighth position. Emerson looking to maintain that position with him. And he'll do just that. No problem. And Simon right there to stay on pace. With his own birdie, but not before Canute putts for par. And that will drop. Keeping Simon Lazat in that tie for fourth position. Looking for a big finish here in Jonesboro as we get to the eagleable par five at 855 feet that you see here on hole 16. It's all about whether or not you want to go for the over the water shot to set up for eagle on your second throw, whether you want to lay up and just play for birdie. Again, with it being the final day, it's a lot more tempting to look for it, to try to jockey for position. And that looks good out of Simon's hands to set him up for the option to go for that second shot. As we will take a look here at Simon's form, just the most textbook backhand form you could ask for. Never really looks like he's moving too hard or over speed, just very smooth, great mechanics, great efficiency. Joel plays a little bit more of a higher wide spike hyzer play, but nonetheless finds himself where he wants to be. And hoping that's going to get stable. Got a lot of turn out of that. Just hoping it can fight back into a good position. Must have fight through. And it just didn't. And all he's going to be really be able to do from there is pitch towards the water's edge and look to cross for birdie. No real chance to threaten for the eagle. And honestly, Knut's looking for a similar obstacle if he's not careful. But it doesn't penetrate as far. It does get left. But again, when you're that far right on the fairway, there's just really no way to challenge the water cross on the second shot. Joel, though, has that option. He's looking for it. Swings it out there. Can it make it? No. Hits the water. Did not get forward enough. That's going to be drop zone for Joel Freeman. I mean, Canute trying some magic with the crazy Sky Anheuser. And just goes deep. But that is still in bounds, I believe. Don't think there's any OB on the back side of the basket. So he should be fine. But just still going to be mostly setting up for birdie there. Simon looking to cross here for his eagle opportunity. And gets batted down. That's going to be OB. And 
Amherst. Oh, no. He didn't even get out. I mean, this is going to be so challenging for him to cross the water from this position. I think he's forward enough to have a look, but it's just not ideal. Trying to maybe skip it over the water. And it is safe, but still not really much of a look at the basket. As we see Simon here from the drop zone, no problem, lands near the bullseye. Limiting the damage. Pitch up there. And what looked to be just a layup for Canute kind of goes awry. And here's Joel. I guess he would have touched inbounds before going OB, so was able to take it from there. So you are going to see Canute actually still finding the birdie, despite his layup not going according to plan. Emerson here. Able to walk away with the par despite some struggles. Keeps him in that top 10 position. Simon also finding his par. Pitches his par as well. And now we head to the par four, hole 17. Just looking to set yourself up on that left-hand side of the fairway. Maybe even towards that right tree line. Just to make sure you can set up the straight shot on the approach to get your birdie. Seem to get through here and make some good progress. And that is just... Oh, wow. Fortunate tree kick. Very fortunate. If he would have got tangled up in there, he would have been in some real trouble. But we'll actually have a look at the pin probably. And that is a great shot from Simon Lazat. Perfect placement. Gets right there to the opening of the green to get a look at approach for birdie. And that does come out. And that will settle. And he gets two meters of relief off that barbed wire. Take a look at Joel Freeman here. Just really good, smooth form. Stays up tall. And is able to deliver some good accuracy. So we now see Emerson key up. Playing that slow turn. Now needs it to come out. Good skip left and right there near Simon for a great look at the basket on the approach shot. And yeah, Canute, who got that fortunate tree kick, still has a chance here to approach the pin for birdie, and he's done well. Really nicely done. Joel trying to fit the slow flip up forehand in the green, and we'll do just that. Great forehand as well on Emerson's hands, but kind of gets caught up. Doesn't quite get the ground action he was hoping for. And Simon almost kind of given that a run, calling for it to settle down, and it does. So he will have his look at birdie. Most of the card has a great birdie look. It's Emerson that has the more challenging one here outside the circle. Just a little wide right. And still out here. Tricky straddle. 
but does stick it for par. Main thing, that tie in the top ten. And Joel for birdie there will now tie him at eighth position. Simon looking to stay in that top five range here with this birdie. Oh, no. I'm not even sh That looks center and then just kind of spun left from this angle. That looks so close. Oh, man. I, I still can't believe that. Great birdie, though, from Canute. Fighting back, at least into that top 25 position on the leaderboard. And, yeah, you could see Simon just, just as confused as the rest of us. Yeah, that is very unfortunate. As we head into our final hole, the tricky hole 18, you have a gap to challenge up the middle. Or you can go for the wide hyzer if you want, but it's all about landing in a good position near that fork. If you're dead center of the fork, it makes it so hard to approach the green for birdie. It's also some OB that you have to watch out for on both sides of the fairway if you're wide left or too wide right and you don't get back in the play. Canute does go for the gap. Pushing right, needs that to fade out. And that's fine, and I think he has a look up the right lane. It seemed like he was on the right side of that fork and should have a look to approach the green. Here's Joel Freeman. Also attacking the gap that has so much hyzer angle on it, and it's not really flipping up. Drops. Looks fine. Just going to be a long approach. Oh, and that is just rough from Simon. Looks like he lost his footing on the tee, and that is left OB. Yeah, it's kind of a mixture of releasing early, but I think a lot of it had to do with him slipping on the tee pad. At least that's what it appeared like. Very unfortunate. Forehand here from Emerson. gets stuck up in the trees there on that right hand side very tough stance there from Simon just trying to get as far up as he can and now here's Joel Let's get caught up on that tree as well. And now Emerson is in quite the rough. And just fights out to where he can. And Canute. Able to get up near the circle there. Emerson trying to get up there. That's threatening the OB though on the left hand side of the green and yeah. He's gonna find the OB. Just juice that one out left. See Freeman swinging that hyzer right into near the bullseye. Well done there from Joel Freeman. Making the most of a little bit of a tough tee shot. Simon trying to get up and down to get the bogey. Gets near the bullseye. Should be able to get it. Here's Emerson. And just wide. Canute low out his hand on the putt. Oh, 
And Emerson wide again. And now the strokes are just piling on here for Emerson, losing some ground on the leaderboard. Simon takes the bogey. That'll tie him at sixth position to finish, and that's a big finish for Simon. Great way to get a you know, pretty deep run here early on in his start to the season. So Emerson will take a seven here on the whole a triple. Keeps him at least within the top 20, but certainly at times looking for top 10 throughout this round. Joel, in the meantime, will maintain his tie for six with Simon. And Canute will actually stick around that top 20 position. And so with Jonesboro open coming to a close, this is how our chase card fared. A couple of players there tying up for sixth. Emerson dropping down to 18, but still sits in the top 20, as well as Canute, who's just on the back end of that. And as you can see, it was Calvin Heiberg and Paul McBeth tying and going to a playoff. Kevin Jones falling into that third position. Of course, Calvin did win that playoff for his first title of the year. So shout out to him and shout out to all of you Patreon supporters who helped make this coverage possible. Again, appreciate all of you for tuning in. We'll be back with more for you at the Dynamic Disc Open coming up real soon as we'll have a feature card on day one and chase card coverage and PO throughout the rest of the event. I am Dustin Murray. You can give me a follow at follow Dustin on Instagram and also Dustin Disc on YouTube. I will be back for the Dynamic Disc Open bringing you some more coverage. So hope that you'll stick around for that. Definitely follow and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Hey, Disc Golf fans. Thanks for watching some great Disc Golf Pro Tour action on Gatekeeper Media. Coming up, we've got live coverage on the Disc Golf Pro Tour YouTube channel of the final round action. Watching this later? Check out the Disc Golf Network at discgolfnetwork.com to see what's up live next. And thanks for watching Gatekeeper Media.